I want to come back to the foundation of your faith because you say you're a believer in the God of the Bible. But that means that you are, I take it, a believer in miracles. Miracles, uh, you will recall David Hume in the 18th century saying, are a violation of the laws of nature. How on earth are you squaring those two things? Well, uh, it's not how on earth, it's how in heaven, but I'll come to that in a moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> David Hume's objection is the one that comes up all the time. And if you care to watch my debate with Christopher Hitchens some years ago, he pushed that very hard with me. But Hume is a very interesting case. And uh, years ago, I started to read the dialogues uh, of religion that he wrote. And I began to be a bit uncertain of the accuracy of what he wrote. And later in life, just a few years ago, I had the privilege of having an interview with the late Anthony Flew, brilliant philosopher at Reading University, and the Richard Dawkins of his day, and the world expert on the works of David Hume. And I asked him about this the miracles being a violation of the laws of nature. And you know, it was one of the most honest statements I've ever heard from a leading thinker. He said, I was wrong about you. I said, seriously, yes, he said, I was wrong. I would need to write all my books again, but I'll never get to it. That is an amazing thing for a person to say. Now, what is the problem? The, the problems are many with Hume. He talked about miracles being violations of the laws of nature, but actually he didn't believe in cause and effect. So for him, formulating a law of nature would have been very difficult. But leaving that aside, the problem lies in the word violate and in the nature of law. You see, laws of nature are not like the laws of a country. How can I put it? I think it was C.S. Lewis, and I'm old enough to have listened to Lewis, so you can judge how old I am from that. Lewis is still, I think, one of the best thinkers dealing with this question, and he talked about Hume many years ago in a book entitled Miracles. And he said, to illustrate this, let's imagine I'm staying in a hotel in Oxford tonight, and I put 100 pounds in the drawer, and then I put another 100 tomorrow night. So that's 200. And I wake up on the third morning, and there are 50 pounds in my drawer. What do I conclude? That the laws of arithmetic have been broken, or the laws of England? Now think about it, because obviously the laws of England have been broken, but how do I know that? because I know the laws of arithmetic have not been broken. My mistake was to think of the drawer and my room being a closed system of cause and effect. But it isn't. Somebody, a thief, could put their hand in and take the 150 pounds out. And Lewis makes this point, you see, the laws are not constraints. They don't forbid it. They just describe what normally happens. They do not tell you whether someone can intervene or not. Now, it's very important to realize that. You see, one of the stories in the, the accounts in the New Testament Gospels is that the early disciples, the women, first of all, were able to get into the tomb of Jesus because an angel had rolled away the stone. Now, analyze that from a scientific point of view. A stone, a heavy stone, to move it needs a force. And Newton's law will tell you that the force F is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So, that law would have described the motion of that stone. It obeyed the laws of nature. What the um, laws of nature can't tell you is anything about the existence of angels who can push a stone. See, the point is, 
the laws are inadequate in every situation because laws need to be supported by initial conditions and boundary conditions. The laws don't tell you what those are. Of course, we have to discuss the existence of angels on different grounds. But the point I'm saying to you is that initial, it was a supernatural shove, of course. But once it was inputted, the laws of nature took over and the stone rolled and you could have worked it out by Newton's law. So what I'm concluding is that miracles don't violate the laws of nature. God upholds he sustains the universe, and he's built regularities into it. And here's the irony of the whole thing. Unless you know the laws, you'll never recognize a miracle. If you thought the dead people pop up out of the graves all the time, you'd never see anything special in the resurrection of Jesus. You've got to know the regularities in order to recognize the input of something from outside.